Okay, the next uh, talk will be on red gazes and manga, and I think we'll probably become ex explained what that means and uh, why that is new evidence for the AGN maintenance mode. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Edmund Chung, and I'm a postdoc at the Kavli IPMU in Japan. And today, I'll be presenting a new project that I'm leading, which is part of the manga survey, uh, which is also part of the slow and force survey. Uh, and it will obtain, will obtain resolved spectroscopy of 10,000 nearby galaxies. Uh, the work that I'm presenting, which is in collaboration with Kevin Bundy, uh, these folks, and the rest of the manga team, introduces a new class of galaxies called the red geysers. And they represent new evidence for AGN maintenance mode feedback. But first, what is AGN maintenance mode feedback and why do we need it? Well, AGN maintenance mode feedback is from low luminosity AGNs powered by radiatively inefficient accretion flows. And why we need it is because this feedback in the form of ejected jets and winds interact with the surrounding gas within quiescent galaxies, which ultimately prevents star formation and maintains quiescence. So AGN maintenance mode feedback is needed to keep quiescent galaxies quiescent. And while there's evidence for AGN maintenance mode feedback in the cores of clusters, at the moment, there is no evidence for AGN maintenance mode feedback in more typical quiescent galaxies in the field, which make up the vast majority of the quiescent population. But with manga comes new evidence. And this new evidence comes in the form of this interacting system, uh, which is not part of a larger group and is separated by 32 kiloparsecs. Manga has observed both these galaxies with two hexagonal bundles uh, that are 12 and 22 arc seconds in diameter corresponding to 19 and 61 fibers. Now, and, and here is the color composite image. Keeping with the theme of manga, we decided to name our galaxies after famous manga characters. And for this system, we decided to go with the comic Akira, and we went with calling the red elliptical galaxy Akira, and the blue spiral galaxy Tetsuo. So how does Akira and Tetsuo compare to the rest of the current manga sample? Well, here is the rest frame and UV-R versus stellar mass diagram of the current MOG sample, which contains about 700 galaxies at a redshift around 0 0.1. And Akira and Manga are there. And you can see that Tetsuo is blue with a low stellar mass, while Akira has a moderate stellar mass and a very red color, indicating that it is quiescent. And Akira is a typical field quiescent galaxy. But Akira's quiescence is interesting because merger simulations indicate that Tetsuo should have deposited some cool, cool material onto Akira by this point of the interaction, uh, meaning that Akira should be forming stars from this cool material. Now, we can test this prediction uh, by looking at the sodium D doublet absorption lines at 5890 and 5896 angstroms, which are probes of the cool ISM. So measuring the sodium D equivalent width of every spaxo in Akira generates this map here, and this illustrates what manga can do. At each spaxel, which uh, measures 0.5 arc seconds by 0.5 arc seconds, you get a full spectrum going from 3,600 angstroms to 10,300 angstroms uh, at a spectral resolution of about 2,000. And you can do a lot with this data. But for this map, uh, we plotted the sodium D equivalent width and with darker spaxels representing more absorption. And you can see there is a strong asymmetric absorption on the right side of Akira. And since the stellar distribution is smooth and symmetric, this irregular absorption is most likely due to cool material in front of Akira. And this is confirmed by the measured dust extinction map, uh, the spatial correspondence of the measured dust extinction map. Now, we can measure whether this cool material is flowing into or out of Akira by measuring the line of sight velocities of this material, which we've done and shown here. So in red is material that is redshifted with respect to Akira, and blue material that is blue shifted with respect to Akira. And you can see the majority of the spaxos are redshifted, indicating that this is most likely an uh, inflow of cool material, likely deposited from this interaction. Now we can take this analysis one step further and estimate a gas mass from the dust extinction map using a dust to gas ratio. And with this gas mass, we can measure, we can estimate a star formation rate. And that turns out to be, well, with the gas mass and Kenneth Schmidt law, we can estimate star formation rate. And this star formation turns out to be about 10 to negative 2 solar masses per year. But the measured star formation of Akira, uh, which is based on SED fitting of optical and infrared photometry uh, from SDSS and WISE, 
is only about 10 to negative 5 solar masses per year. So the question is, why is Akira still quiescent? And I hope to answer that question by the end of this talk. So despite the fact that there is no substantial star formation in Akira, there is extensive ionized gas throughout. And that's shown in the H-alpha flux map here, with dark spaxels representing more H-alpha flux. And you can see there's H-alpha flux everywhere, implying that there's ionized gas everywhere. So if there's no star formation in Akira, what does this ionized gas trace? We can begin to answer this question by looking at the ionized gas velocity fields, which I've done here, or show here in this bottom panel. And you see there's a large gradient going from 300 kilometers per second to negative 300 kilometers per second, which is in stark contrast to stellar velocities, which go plus minus 20 kilometers per second. In other words, the ionized gas is decoupled from the stars, indicating that which is inconsistent with a disk of ionized gas. We also find that the ionized gas is, displays a much more complicated ionized, much more complicated velocity dispersion structure than the stellar velocity structure up here, especially this high knot to the left of Akira. This again implies that also, this is also inconsistent with a disk of ionized gas. What's also inconsistent with the disk of ionized gas is that the profiles of the emission lines are, um, well, they're, they're interesting. So here is the 035007 line at six different spaxels, as indicated by the arrows. And what I want you to see is that these lines are broad, asymmetric, and or double peaked, indicating that this ionized gas contains more than one component, which is again inconsistent with a disk of ionized gas. We also find that the ionized gas velocities exceed the circular velocities of Akira. Elaborating on this point, let's first pick out some spaxels that lie along the velocity field right there. And let's see where that lies in the velocity position diagram. All right. So Michele Capillari has used his genes anisotropic modeling technique, i.e. JAM, to model, model the mass distribution of Akira, which produces a circular velocity curve. And I have overplot that in blue here. And a parameter that is uh, fit in this JAM modeling is the inclination of the best fitting oblate spheroid to Akira. I've used that inclination to deproject the ionized gas on this plot because the only equilibrium configuration in an axisymmetric object is in the galaxy plane. So if this ionized gas were in a disk, then it has to be in this galaxy plane, in the galaxy plane with this inclination. But as you can see, the ionized, the deprojected ionized gas velocities exceed the circular velocities of Akira. And that indicates that the ionized gas is not rotating under the influence of gravity. And finally, we also modeled the data, the velocity field of the data with a disk model. And here's the best fitting disk model. And just by eye, you can see there are discrepancies. Looking at the residual, you see that there are large discrepancies with a weird structure. All this points to the ionized gas not being in a disk. So if the ionized gas is not in a disk, then the most likely alternative that is consistent with the high ionized gas velocity dispersions and a symmetric velocity field is an outflowing wind. Now given that this is an outflowing wind, the next question that we have is what's ionizing this gas? So here's the BPT diagram, O3 over H beta versus S2 over H alpha, of all the spaxels in Akira that have signal to noise greater than five in these four lines. And this plot, this map below, is a resolved BPT diagram. Every spaxel is color-coded according to its location in the BPT diagram above. And you can see that almost all spaxels display liner line ratios. And according to recent work from Atlas 3D and others, liner line ratios in early type galaxies are most likely generated by evolved stars. But in Akira's case, because it has an inflow of cool material and an outflow of warm material in a fast wind, uh, shocks are likely an additional source of ionization. And we believe we see signs of shocks in Akira in the H-alpha equivalent width map shown here. And, you can, and here the lighter colors represent more H-alpha emission relative to the stars. And the contours follow, contours are tracing the stellar continuum. And clearly the most interesting aspect of this map is this narrow biconical feature that is oriented along the velocity field a morphology that's suggestive of wind-driven shocks. Now, we can test whether shocks are consistent in this uh, data by comparing the line ratios within this H-alpha equivalent width pattern to line ratios predicted by shock models. 
So first, let's look at the H alpha equivalent with pattern in the resolved BPT diagram right there. And let's pick out some spaxels within this pattern are those. And then let's see where the BPT, where they align the BPT diagram above here. Okay. And then let's overplot a shock model from Allen 2008. And Orange lines represent shock velocity, and the blue, light blue lines represent magnetic field. And you can see that the line ratios within the H alpha equivalent width pattern is consistent with a fast shock of around 300 kilometers per second, which is similar to the maximum ionized gas velocity The maximum ionized gas velocity. Now, in support of shocks within Akira, we also show the line ratio maps of O3 over H beta and S2 over H alpha. And they display complicated and irregular structures, which are similar, similar to the ionized gas velocity dispersion map here, indicative of a tumultuous and multi-component ISM, which is consistent with the presence of shocks. So having argued for a win that resulted in shocks in Akira, the natural question now is, uh, what is the power source of these winds? Well, there has been a detection, detection of a central radio source combined with the lack of star formation implies that there is an AGN in this galaxy. And follow-up Jansky VLA observations, recent follow-up Jansky VLA observations, uh, from, which has a much higher resolution than the first survey, 1.5 arc seconds versus 5 arc seconds, uh, shows that this radio source is a central point source, indi indicating that this AGN feedback is not manifested in large-scale winds or large-scale jets. Instead, it may be man manifested, manifested in small-scale jets, which are less than one kiloparsec, or uncollimated winds that are predicted to occur in galaxies that AGNs that are powered by radiatively inefficient accretion flows. And that's interesting because the Eddington ratio of the AGN, this AGN, is 10 to the negative 4, meaning that it is powered by radiatively inefficient accretion flow. And this AGN has been called many names, including radio mode, kinetic mode, or jet mode. So if this AGN feedback is in the form of uncollimated winds, and this would be the first observation of this predicted phenomenon. Now, even if this is an AGN-driven wind, it would be meaningless if it didn't shut down, prevent star formation in Akira. But encouragingly, uh, from our order of magnitude estimates, we find that the power of the wind is about 10 to the 39 ergs per second, while the cooling rate of the warm ionized gas is about 10 to the 38 ergs per second, and the cooling rate of the cool gas traced by the sodium D is about 10 to the 39 ergs per second. Thus, the AGN-driven wind can balance the cooling rate of the gas and maintain, maintain a curious quiescence. Now, given that quiescent galaxies can obtain gas from a variety of sources, including minor mergers, which occur about once per year, and stellar mass loss, we believe Akira represents a phenomenon that may be representing how typical quiescent galaxies maintain its, their quiescence. In fact, we believe Akira is just one galaxy, a new class of galaxies that are characterized by these narrow biconical patterns in the H alpha equivalent width maps. We believe these galaxies are all experiencing AGN maintenance mode feedback, and we have dubbed them uh, the red geysers. We're analyzing the rest of these at the moment, and we expect to find more as the manga survey continues. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Right. Uh, the only, the first, Akira and Tetsuo is the only interacting uh, geyser that we see so far from SDSS depths. So if we look mean, deeper. So mean, you think that the interaction really doesn't have anything to do with triggering the geyser? It's um, a typical maintenance mode, and I don't think they're all having mergers. Right. I think there are, there could be um, some inflowing material that's not traced by very clear mergers. Maybe if it's deep enough, you'll see shells that are indicative, indicative of a past merger, a minor merger. Uh, but it's also, it could be from a previous feeding episode that we can't see anymore. So I think there's got to be some kind of uh, feeding to the AGN to, to result in this feedback. A related question, what would be the time scale to keep it repeated? We're working on that. <laughs> We're working on that. Not sure. Um, we haven't observed any, or we haven't done any observations in, in uh, CO or anything yet. But we do see uh, atomic gas traced by sodium D.
I, I, I would bet there is molecular vastness. At least some. Okay, thank you.